The sequence is clear. Just look at Lot. The angels who went to rescue Lot and his family in Genesis chapter 19. The Bible says that the angels, because Lot and his, his family hesitated, they were like deer in the headlights, the angels seized them by the hands and led them out. In other words, just as in the definition of the harpazo or the seizing or the snatching away, the angels in Genesis chapter 19 seized Lot and his family by the hands and led them out. And even after they led them out of the city, told them to flee to the mountains, and Lot said, no, we'll never make it. What about this little town over here? The angel said, I'll grant you this also, but hurry, because I cannot do anything until you arrive there. I submit to you that it was not a matter of ability. It was a matter of authorization. It was a matter of sequence. Why? Because the Lord had instructed the angels to see Lot and his family safely out of harm's way prior to calling down the wrath that would destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. With respect to the blessed hope, Titus chapter 2, 13 says, While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to take a look at that phrase, the blessed hope, and we're also going to cross-reference it with some other verses in the Bible that really provide context and understanding. Now, I'm going to back up a couple of verses here, and in Titus chapter 2, let me go ahead and first of all go into our fair use notice. I'm going to be looking at some things and showing some things to you, which are copyrighted material, but it will be with the understanding that it's for commentary, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Okay, so let's just go ahead and touch on that. Incidentally, I am going to mention a couple of books that I have on Amazon. Check them out if you feel so inclined. One is entitled, The Wise Shall Understand Israel. And without going too much into it, uh, you'll be able to access it both in Kindle book digital format as well as paperback. The paperback version of the book is actually much longer. The Kindle book will give you a, a synopsis of what the the rest of the, the book is about. But I want to just let you know that make a distinction that the Kindle book is it's not as long as the the paperback. I encourage you to take a look at the Kindle book first and if it's something that you really are appreciating in terms of the value then go ahead and take a look at the paperback it's printed in color from cover to cover as you know color printing can get a little costly so the paperback of this book actually costs more than your typical paperback but then again if you compare it to your college textbooks it's a pretty good deal it's not as expensive as some of the books that you've purchased for college courses. Well, be that as it may, I have another book that I want to uh, bring to your attention. And the second book is The Wise Shall Understand Arpazzo. Why we believe that the rapture of the church must take place before the coming wrath. This book right here is actually available in Kindle book format right now. And Lord willing, I'll make it available as a paperback as well, but right now it's available in Kindle Book digital format, so you can access this as well. Let me go ahead and 
shift over to our next window and while I'm looking at this I'd like to welcome the new subscribers thank you for subscribing when you comment when you like and when you share it extends the reach of these videos and so I really appreciate it sequence matters even Noah and his family were shut up into the ark seven days before it started to rain the sequence matters so again and again we have examples in the scriptures of how the Lord removes his own from harm's way prior to his wrath being revealed now from the standpoint of what we're reading here in first Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5 where it's describing the rapture of the church and then the day of the Lord once again referencing the day of the Lord to Zephaniah chapter 1 you don't want to be here when that begins let's go ahead and continue with verse 2 it says not to be easily upset or troubled either by a prophecy or by a message or by a letter supposedly from us alleging that the day of the Lord has come verse 3 don't let anyone for I read that a little too fast okay. let me go back up to the tail end of that verse in verse 2 alleging that the day of the Lord has come now notice in verse 2 the last thought presented is the day of the Lord okay so when we read verse 3 we need to reference what we're going to see in verse 3 back to verse 2 okay in terms of the sequence and what verse 1 means to believers, that is the rapture of the church, that does in fact come first. Now the discussion is about the day of the Lord. Okay. In verse 3, don't let anyone deceive you in any way. Usually when someone is trying to deceive you, they're trying to take something away from you. And unfortunately, what is being stolen from some is the hope, the blessed hope that the rapture of the church represents. Don't let anyone steal that from you. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way for that day. Now it's referring to what day? It's referring to the day of the Lord it's referring to the great and terrible day of the Lord okay for that day will not come unless the apostasy let me pause right there what it's saying here when it says for that day will not come it's not saying that our being gathered together to the Lord will not come it's saying that the day that is referenced in verse 2 the day which we know is the day of the Lord will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the man doomed to destruction now it goes on to describe the things that this man is going to do but a lot of people will read verse 4 and suppose that all of these things have to happen before believers are gathered to the Lord. What it's referring to is the day of the Lord. It's saying that the day of the Lord will not come until the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. What I'm trying to distinguish here is that the gathering together of believers to the Lord Jesus Christ occurs sequentially before the day of the Lord which is consistent with the sequence that we find between 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 which talks about the rapture and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 which describes the day of the Lord it is consistent 
with the sequence that we find in Isaiah chapter 26, verses 20 and 21. Incidentally, if you read Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19, that's a picture of the dead in Christ rising first. But verse 20 is depicting the rapture, and verse 21 is depicting the day of the Lord. Once again, the sequence is there. One, two, three. It's right there. I'm taking time to walk through this with you because there are some who are not, who are decidedly not watching or paying attention until the third temple is built. Now the third temple will be built. We know that it will be built because the Bible says it will be. But there are some who are not watching or paying attention because they believe that the third temple has to be built and the man of lawlessness has to do the things that are described in verse 4 prior to our gathering or, or our being gathered together to be with the Lord at His appearing. Remember, the, the appearance of the Lord for believers in the Lord Jesus Christ is the rapture of the church. The church being the ecclesia, which by definition means the called out ones. The day is coming when the called out ones will literally and physically and bodily be called out. We're going to hear those words come up here. And we're going to be changed. And what follows that is presented right here in 2 Thessalonians. But it's very important to understand that our being gathered together with the Lord or to the Lord, unto the Lord, is not contingent upon the third temple being built or the man of lawlessness doing this and that and the other. No, it's talking about the day of the Lord. Remember, the day of the Lord comes after what the Bible has to say about the church believers in the Lord Jesus Christ being gathered unto him. It describes the rapture first in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And then it describes the day of the Lord in chapter 5. The sequence matters. Now, all of these things that describe what the man of lawlessness is going to do and the day of the Lord and, and all of this, that follows what the Bible says about our being gathered together with him. And I'm going to go ahead and drill down a little further. When it says, for that day will not come, understand also that those words, if you read them in the King James Version, they're in italics. Now, that means that the translator put those words in to the verse to make it a little bit easier to understand but you always have to be a little careful when you see words in italics to understand that though a translator made the decision to include them they were not originally there now i don't have any problem at all with those words because what it's referring to is that which is described in verse 2. When it says, for that day will not come unless, it's not referring to our being gathered together unto the Lord. What it's referring to when it says, for that day will not come, is the day of the Lord 
in verse 2. So when someone tries to refute our being gathered together with the Lord, as described in verse 1 with this passage, when someone tries to refute the teaching of the rapture of the church coming before the the wrath that's coming. Just remember to make the association that verse 3 is referring to verse 2. Verse 3 is talking about the day of the Lord not coming until it's a reference to the day of the Lord in verse 2 I've spent a fair amount of time on this but this is one of those things that once you can appreciate the sequence that's presented here you'll find that the sequence even in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 is consistent with the sequence in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 and then 5. The blessed hope is something that when we think about the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ it has a purifying effect as described in 1 John 3 verse 3. It has a sanctification effect as described in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 1 through 12. Dear friend, I want to draw your attention to the most important page on the Wise Shall Understand. Tap on the menu, it'll toggle, and you can see the gospel. The gospel means the good news, and it is an accounting of the life of Jesus of Nazareth, and his Hebrew name being Yeshua, which means the Lord saves. It's summed up in a single verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There's a video that I want you to take a look at on this page. It's called The ABCs of Salvation. Tap and watch that video, please. There's another video, which if you tap on this, it'll take you to a website where you'll have an opportunity to watch a three-hour dramatization of the Gospel of John. I encourage you to watch it with your family. It is so well done. It's true, verse for verse, to that which is written in the Gospel of John. You know, the name of Jesus, you know, his Hebrew name is Yeshua, which once again means the Lord saves. Now, that in and of itself, I mean, it makes you think, wow, you shall call him Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. So awesome. What we have right here, friends, are some verses in the Bible referred to as the four spiritual laws or the Roman road, at least the way that they're organized right here. And what I want you to do is read through these verses. Understand, first of all, that God loves you. We already read John 3.16, but I encourage you to read these verses. Read them with your family. You see number two right here. Man is sinful and separated from God. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Law number three, Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. Law number four, we must individually receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. After you read the verses on this page, my friend, what I want to draw your attention to is a prayer of salvation. Now, this is an example, okay? This is an example. But I believe that if you pray this prayer sincerely, God will hear your prayer and you will be saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 13, for whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what this prayer is all about. You know, just before I go, I want to encourage you once again to click on and visit any one of these links for resources available to you through the Why Shall Understand. And it's been a joy to share with you the Word of God as we consider current events, Bible prophecy, and the Gospel. God bless.